Hey guys, today we're talking about the magic of drop zones in Apple Motion. Drop zones allow you to easily replace video files while preserving any properties, behaviors, filters, or anything else you've applied to that shot. It'll instantly apply it to the new shot that you're replacing it with. Now, in Apple Motion, I would say this isn't so essential because when you drag a B-roll shot in Apple Motion over another one in your project, it does allow you to drop in and replace the shot and preserve, let's say all the filters I'd already applied to that first shot. So while I don't think drop zones in motion are really that essential, when are they essential? They're essential when you're trying to create a custom generator that incorporates video clips and you wanna access that generator in Final Cut. Now you've probably run into drop zones plenty of times if you use third-party templates like this one. If you're curious about this particular template, I will link to a video where I review it below. But you don't have to be a professional plugin or template developer to create these types of open animations to be used in Final Cut if you have Apple Motion. Anyone can do it if you know how. I'm gonna walk you through that whole process today. So let's start by creating a Final Cut Generator project. So on the open menu in Motion, we're gonna select this guy here, Final Cut Generator. Let's hit open. And let's drop in our first drop zone. So we're gonna head on up to Object and select New Drop Zone. And here is our drop zone. Let me just give you a quick demo of how this works. I'm gonna take this surfer shot. I'm gonna drag it and hover it over my drop zone and you can see the border turns yellow. And now this B-roll shot has filled in our drop zone. I'm gonna undo that and go back to just the empty body of the drop zone. And what we're going to do now is start modifying this drop zone. So the first thing I'm going to do is head on over to shape masks at the bottom of the canvas, hit this drop down. let's grab the circle mask. I'm going to draw a circle around this drop zone. And so now whatever clip we drop into this drop zone is going to be cropped into this circle. So let me go back and show you. I'm gonna grab that surfer again, drop it in again and there it is. Now let's make some modifications to this. I'm going to select the drop zone in my project pane, head on over the inspector, and we can play a little bit with the pan and scale here in the drop zone. So I can kind of reposition my clip. And now let's add some filters to this. Yes, you can add filters to drop zones as well. So whatever clip you drop into the drop zone, that filter will be applied to that clip. So let's make sure we're selected on that drop zone. Head on up to filters. Let's go down to looks and let's select process. And you can see here that we've got a filter applied to our clip. All right, now how do we take this and bring it into Final Cut? Let's head on up to file and save, and we're gonna get this pop-up window and it's going to ask me some questions here. It's gonna ask me for the template name. I'm just gonna call this drop zone example. And under category, I already have a category. I'm gonna throw it under what I have as show opens here, or I could create a new category by selecting the new category option. And for theme, I'm just gonna leave it as none. Let's select publish and we're going to wait. While we're waiting for this template to save to the Final Cut generators, if you like this video, if you feel like you're learning something, let me know, give me that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you never miss a future upload. Now we're gonna head over to Final Cut and now in Final Cut under the show opens category in our generators sidebar, you can see our drop zone example. And I'm gonna drop this into the timeline. So what we can see here is that our surfer is already in the generator. And if we head on over to the inspector window, to the generator inspector, the only option we have here is this drop zone. So we could change this drop zone to something else by selecting it, picking a different shot and applying the clip. But you'll see here that there's no other options. I'm too zoomed in on this shot. It doesn't look great. I can't, you know, change that filter at all. The only thing I can do are the basic like transform crop and distort tools and the color correction tools. That's all I've got here. So why did that happen? It's because we didn't publish the parameters we wanted to be able to adjust in Final Cut back in Motion. Let's head back over to Motion. I'm gonna show you something. Let's go back to our drop zone. And what we need to do now is to hover our cursor, let's say on the pan line till we get this little carrot here. We're gonna drop down and we're gonna hit publish. Let's go to scale as well and hit publish. Let's head on over to filters and we're gonna do the same thing, publish there. Now we need to save it by hitting Command S. Let's head back over to Final Cut. 
drop that drop zone example in again. And now look, suddenly we have so many more options here under our generator. We can scale down the shot and change the pan. And we can even dial down that filter. So that's the basics of working with drop zones. They're actually more meaningful over here in Final Cut than they are in Motion, but you have to set them upright in Motion to take full advantage of them in Final Cut. Now I'm gonna show you a more complex project here in Apple Motion to kind of demonstrate for you some best practices when it comes to using drop zones. So let me just play for you what I've got here. It's kind of a show open and the drop zones disappear and reveal behind these lines that cover the screen and the drop zones actually start from nothing and scale up. The drop zones also have a drop shadow and they also rotate a little bit. So when creating a more complex project like this, there are a few important things you should know. First of all, go back and clear out the drop zones. So when you bring them into Final Cut, they just look like these gray slates with these arrows. That's the more professional way to do it. You will want to drop media in as you're building your generator, just so you can get a sense of what a video clip would look like with, let's say, a filter that you've applied or some sort of cropping. And you will also need to make sure that you publish those pan and scale parameters while you have media inside your generator before you clear it out, because those options won't be available to publish if you just have the empty drop zone. So let's open up this template in Final Cut and I will show you how it comes together. So you can see here in my inspector window that there are a lot more options with this generator that I built in Motion. I published a lot of the parameters so you can change the color of some of the lines and the gradient. Of course, we have our drop zones. Let me drop in our clips into those drop zones. So there you go, guys. There is our show open incorporating drop zones that we created in motion and published to Final Cut. If you guys like this video, let me know. Give me a thumbs up. I picked out some other videos I think you might really enjoy. Thanks for hanging out with me today.